plenty of ways to slice this piece of Italian cake, but let's just begin with Pierre Gasly and Alfa Torre, or Toro Rosso as they used to be. 2008, first ever win for Sebastian Vettel, came at Monza in the Italian Grand Prix, driving for Toro Rosso, and now we have Pierre Gasly winning for the same team, now rebranded Alfa Torre, still owned by Red Bull, now using Honda engines. It was a straight fight towards the end, Honda versus Renault, the Renault power unit in the McLaren of Carlos Sainz. Carlos had that look in his eyes during the red flag period. They shouldn't have stopped the race. I was ready to go out and win this one. I would have been second if Lewis hadn't been penalized. Let's get going but it was Pierre Gasly. He didn't just hang on, he drove absolutely beautifully. As I've been saying in the last few videos, Pierre Gasly has this feel about his driving. He definitely has shorter corners than Carlos Sainz. We could see it, the two of them out there in direct comparison. And on top of that, he has this ability to straighten the car, find this little sort of straight exit bit out of the parabolica, particularly where he wasn't leaning on the car quite as much as Carlos. Yeah, there was the odd moment when he was running a bit wide, but generally speaking, he was getting a really nice flat exit from the parabolica, and that was doing a lot for his tire management. Anyway, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Incredibly emotional. There was a shot on the grid before the start of the race of Pierre Gasly doing what he always does. He gets down on one knee, he touches the surface of the road, says a little prayer. I don't think he was saying, help me win this race. I think he's probably saying, let's have a safe race. That's very much in Pierre's character. But a very Matthew Hayden, you know, the Australian batsman always touching the wicket before he goes into bat. And the same thing with Pierre Gasly, he has this feel, the surface of the road, and, and that win was just as good as you're gonna see anywhere. It was, of course, a win the product of circumstance. Bear in mind that Lewis Hamilton was given a 10 second stop go penalty, which effectively amounts to what, a 27 second penalty. And he eventually drove through the field to finish seventh. He would have won the race easily, of course, had he not done that. But he was given that penalty for coming into the pit lane when it was closed. And it was closed because Kevin Magnussen had retired his Haas Ferrari with some mechanical issue just before the entry to the pit lane. And of course, they then closed the pit lane when the safety car came out. But just before the safety car came out, and after Magnussen had stopped, Pierre Gasly made it into the pits. Brilliant call by Alfa Torre, by Franz Tost and the team, to get him in there, get him off the soft tires, get him onto the hard tire. And then when there was the red flag and they stopped the race completely due to Charles Leclerc's accident at the Parabolica, they were able to put him on the medium tire. And that was what enabled him to race one-on-one -on -one with Carlos Sainz. So a lot of things had to happen for Pierre Gasly. Remember, he was like P10 in the early phase of the race. Indeed, going into the first corner right off the line. He had a big moment with Alex Albon. Three into two wouldn't go and Alex Albon was punted off to the left but he definitely made contact with Pierre but it says a lot I guess for that Alfa Torre chassis that he was able to carry on and, and, and win the race. Did I just say that and win the race? Yes, Pierre Gasly won the Italian Grand Prix. Absolutely amazing, so happy for those guys. I thought it was really nice at the end when Carlos Sainz, who obviously was disappointed to be second on this day when the win was out there to be to be taken by any number of drivers, that he went along to all the Alfa Tori, the Toro Rosso guys. Of course, he used to drive for Toro Rosso as well. So there's a lot of ironies in all of that. But let's take the race overall. Okay, this is a race where Lewis Hamilton, for whatever reason, gets this penalty. So he's never gonna win the race. The most he can do is drive through the field and finish as he did in seventh place, setting fastest lap. So you would imagine, first of all, that Valtteri Bottas would, would win this race. That's what Mercedes hire him for. If Lewis has a problem, you're gonna win this race, Valtteri. Well, he didn't. He was really nowhere. He drove one of the worst or the slowest or the most uninspiring opening laps I've seen in a long time. And thereafter, he was in traffic. First of all, he was saying that the car felt as if it had a puncture. Then there was a temperature issue. He couldn't really get past Lando Norris's McLaren. He was just there and trying and trying and trying. Couldn't do it. So Valtteri didn't win. So who else was going to win? Well, Max Verstappen, you'd say. Well, Max was never really in it. As I said yesterday, he didn't have a great qualifying session. There was a little bit of traffic. The Red Bull wasn't great in its trimmed out form and he was kind of nowhere in the race and eventually retired. So he was out as well. So now who are we looking at? We're looking at potentially, I don't know, Ferrari. Well, forget Ferrari, they were never in it. 
Sebastian Vettel retired very early on from the back of the field with what he said was an exploded brake line. There's a lot of fire and brimstone out the back of the car in the early laps, but he was out very early. And then Charles Leclerc, who, who came in at the right time, he inherited positions because of all that was going on with the safety car and then with the red flag. He was out there potentially looking for a place in the top five when he just lost it in the Parabolica, halfway through the Parabolica. And it was surprising how near the tire wall was to the exit of the parabolic. It didn't take long for him to go through the travel straight into the tire wall and it didn't allow him to bounce off at all. It was just head on, bang, stop. So it was a big G retardation there. But luckily Sharp was okay, out of the car, seen later running through the gravel and then later on putting his arm around Pierre Gasly, of course. So it wasn't Ferrari. So would it be McLaren? On this day, Carlos Sainz slightly quicker than Lando Norris. Lando didn't have the greatest of qualifying sessions. He was really good. He was third on Friday. But Carlos Sainz was always on top of the car on what I've described as this geometric type circuit, which really flatters his style of driving. And he did drive beautifully without fault. And you got the feeling that with 10, 15 laps to go, he would probably remorselessly close the gap to Pierre Gasly and maybe come past in DRS with maybe two to three laps to go. But because of the way Gasly was looking after his tires, because of the way he drives, he's got this great style of being able to come out of the brake pedal pressure at exactly the right rate. He does have shorter corners. He does therefore ask less of the tires and of the car. And he made no mistakes either. It was very difficult for Carlos Sainz. He was, of course, delighted to be P2 in the overall context of things, but in the overall Carlos Sainz, this was a career-changing moment. Yes, he looked good in Italy, the next year's Ferrari driver, but he didn't win the Italian Grand Prix. That went to the Alfa Tori driver, Pierre Gasly. P3, Lance Stroll, he too benefited from all the stuff that was going on because he stayed out, he didn't come in. And then when the red flag came out, he was able to come in and get a free pit stop onto the hard tire. So that was a big, big move for Lance Stroll. He gained track position by not coming in and then was rewarded with a free pit stop. So he drove well to finish third. But I think that's a reflection too in a relatively straight fight of where Mercedes are now relative to Renault and Honda. Looks like kind of parity. And that's a really good thing. If this regulation has done nothing other than give us a more equal playing field between the engines on race day, that's a really good thing. So Lando Norris finished fourth. He'll be a bit disappointed with that, but nonetheless for McLaren's second and fourth, great result at Monza. And Valtteri Bottas was fifth, an uninspiring fifth and a disappointed fifth, I would guess, for Mercedes on a day when really he should have won the Italian Grand Prix with Lewis, as I say, having that problem. P6, Daniel Ricciardo, he did a really good job in the Renault. He had to look after his tyres two thirds of the way through the race. He didn't quite have the pace of the McLaren, but nonetheless, for Renault, this is a strong result again. And Lewis Hamilton drove really well, of course, to come through into seventh place. You've got to wonder whether or not that was poor management or just sheer bad luck, which led to that penalty. And Alfa Romeo also did the same thing with Antonio Giovinazzi. They brought him in when the pit lane was closed and also had to serve a 10 second stop go penalty. So there obviously is something there that's slightly blurry, but you would imagine in this world of very precise reading of regulations, very precise organization, strategy, and everything else, particularly that Mercedes have, that they would be right on top of that. There was a light on the left as you're coming out of the parabolica, which was saying pit lane closed or was red or something like that. So you you could perhaps assume that it was the driver's call not to come in ultimately if he sees that light. But if Lewis is getting instructions to box, 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 and he goes in and the light's over there, he's just gonna follow instructions and go in. But the irony, as I say, was that Pierre Gasly had done exactly the same thing just a few seconds before, but got away with it because it was before they deployed the safety car. So there was that little sort of twilight zone period where he's able to come in, get onto the tires and get out. And, and of course that served him really well when the red flag came out. So it was a complicated race in many ways in terms of pit stops, when to stop, red flag, yellow flag. Kimi Raikkonen did really well for a while, but why Alpha had him back on the red tire at the restart, I don't know, because the tires went off really quickly and he sort of sank through the field, which was a great shame because Kimi drove really well all weekend and he was ahead of Charles Leclerc in the early phase of the race. There was the Alpha with the Ferrari engine ahead of the factory Ferrari with the Ferrari engine and Kimi looking as if he was not gonna get past by Leclerc. Sergio Perez was 10th, he had a slow pit stop. And speaking of pit stops, Lando Norris lost time having to stack behind Carlos Sainz. And 11th was 
Nicholas Latifi. As I said yesterday, he drove very well at Monza and was rewarded with 11th place. Could have been 10th, perhaps, if Lewis hadn't been there. But nonetheless, a good result for Williams. One of their better days. And it came from Nicholas Latifi. George Russell, of course, really quick, but he had other issues with which to deal throughout the day. So rather than get too convoluted and all that detailed analysis, I just want to let the emotion say it all. Alfa Torre won the Italian Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly has won his first race. Full credit to them. Congratulations to Honda too and to everybody involved in that win.